All right, video time. Okay, so here we gonna do some uh, some economy cookery knives. Yeah, these are the economy ones. We got a Smith and Wesson Outback cookery, and then we have an M Tech. These are the sheaves. You see, pretty much the same. You got the side entry. Side entry there. Straps across. Side entry. The heavy padded in the inside so the cookie doesn't just come through with rivets around and D rings on the loop. You probably come from the same company, Taylor brand, but nevertheless. They different in the same, at the same time. So yeah, this is the M Tech. She's extremely sharp. This is called MT five three seven four forty stainless steel, USA design, handcrafted in China. And it's got these little skulls on there. Cause uh. It's, it's, it falls under that zombie apocalypse theme. Yeah. It's one of those rubber handle ones. Rubber molded handles. You know, some, some companies do them a little better than others. Yeah. She is extremely sharp. But at the same time, it's really only a light duty. Light to, to medium duty machete. Has a fairly nice tip on it. I wouldn't, it's not an extremely acute tip, but it will stick. She will stab. She will chop. You know, she does. She you do some power chopping with it. So she will cut. And uh, I would recommend it for people who are looking for light duty machetes. They cost like. 25 and under so if you're looking for a light duty machete this one ain't bad nice hand nice grippy handle on it for with that rubberized handle with a with a lanyard hole you just put a lanyard out any any weapon that has a lanyard hole you should put a lanyard on it because a lanyard is for safety purposes and this is the smith and wesson outback this is a this one's heavier this is a heavier kukri than the MTAC is significantly heavier. I don't have a scale, but it is significantly heavier. Now, this was the one that let me know that. Can you hear that? It's a little loose inside the handle, but not so loose that it slips out. Okay, because it's full tang and it's got the big rivet down there. But see that? This one doesn't do that, doesn't make that sound. Because it's a little loose inside the handle. And there's a few times when I could do this. And it won't make that noise. But it's still in there good and, good and tight, good and sturdy. It ain't like it's going to slip out. But it's a loose spot in there somewhere. And the model on this one is SWBH. That's a Smith & Wesson Bush Hug. That's what it's called, the Bush Hug. But it's also called the Outback. This is the box she come in. Smith and Wesson knives, quality cutting tools. So they're tools. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the uh, Intech. And you know, they not come. They don't come from the same company because Smith and Wesson is Taylor brand and Intech. Is master cutlery, so they're not the same. But yeah, they both medium duty. This one's a little heavier duty. I've seen um, some people say that this one they really could get a little work done, especially around in the yard. I've never used either one of them, but I plan to do some test cutting with them real soon.
you know, I was trying to get an Ontario cookery, but um, I, I had a hard time getting one at the time, so I, I winded up getting these, and I bought both of them at the same time. From different companies, though. I bought this one from, this one came from uh, PA uh, Knife Importers, Pennsylvania Knife Importers, PA Knife Importers. And this one came from, uh, what is it, uh, Bud K. Kennesaw Cutlery. They are collector's catalog. So they had this one in their con knife collector's uh, catalog. So, yeah, but they, they sell them all the time. And here's another knife. Ah. Uh, yeah. Singapore slang got the K on there. That's a that's a symbol that um on a lot of Bud K knives. That's really I believe one of their symbols. I forget what the K stands for, but it's a company company symbol. And it's got a lot of little tricks to this knife. You got a little hook on the back. Got a nice edge on it. It's just one solid piece of metal. So yeah, it's definitely full tang. The weak point is probably right here where the tank doesn't come all the way down. But they put this cut out here for choil. Which I don't think it needed one. It's got another little hole here. In case you wanted to make some, some other kind of landing for the top or whatever. Or do some kind of lashing or whatever. It's got another little hole in the back. It's wrapped handle with some type of cord. It ain't paracord. You know. And this is called a Singapore sling. And um, <clears throat> I was uh, ordering a few knives. And the lady asked me did I, what I like to try this one for a real reasonable price. It was on sale. So I told her, yeah, go ahead and throw it. And I didn't know what it looked like. I hadn't seen it in the catalog or anything. And when I got it, I said, well, okay, well, it's not bad. You know, because I really really don't, wasn't into buying fantasy, fantasy style blades. But somehow this one kind of grew on me. And. Ever since then, I've been looking at some of the other ones and saying, well, maybe, you know, they're not too bad. Because they got a USMC one that kind of, this kind of similar to this. And I think it's well made. You know, I don't, I know they're not made out of the best steel. But just for novelty pieces. And you can use them for things like around the home, you know. So it's a stainless steel. Handcrafted in China. And the uh, item number is BK1510. So, BK1510. Stainless steel handcrafted in China. So, ain't no special, ain't nothing special about it. It ain't no high grade steel or anything like that. It's just a little novelty piece. But it's uh, real nice. And I kind of like the name of it the Singapore Slang. And it does come with a sheath, which has got some poorly made snaps on there. Sometimes they, they just pop right loose, but it's just something to store the knife in. And I wouldn't even carry it in this because it's going to come right on out, you know. It's basically a wall hanger, but it's a functional wall hanger. And this is the box it comes in. Called the Singapore Sling. Some of my blade collection. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that's got one out there. Yeah, from all the Bud K purchases. Purchases. People who purchase from Bud K. Somebody else got one of these babies. But I'm going to put it in action. I'm going to see how I do on a few water bottles. Hopefully, <clears throat> the edge hold up. No roll on me. You know, get, get some... Milk jugs or bottle milk so soda bottles or water bottles. See what she did. Yeah. So yeah, there's a few little cookies here. Some stainless steel, not carbon steel, with edges on them. Unlike the Bud K. Gurkha, genuine Gurkha. You know what I'm saying? Which is more like a bludgeoning tool than it is a slicer. You know. But these here, 
you can do a whole lot with them. You know, in the right hands, they can be, they can be just as deadly as a gur of true gurkha cookery. So yeah, that's a look at them, and uh, they're not bad items, but yeah, these rubber handles, yeah, watch how you store them. It was like that when I bought it, but wasn't no need me complaining about it because it, it is holding in there good. You know, this one, this one is fine. They're good knives and good tools for working around the yard or anything you need to do some slicing and cutting with. And they make, as we all know, serious defense weapons. So take care, peace, and have a good day.